everybody, I bow to the love and the light that is absolutely in you. Lisa A. Romano here, the Breakthrough Life Coach. And today I want to talk about letting go of the narcissistic parent or letting go of the parent in your life that you have not been able to bond with and who has caused you perhaps great anxiety and great stress in your life. And now that person is dying or that person has already died. And how we as recovering adult children from codependency as well as narcissistic abuse and those of us who have grown up in alcoholic homes or have been raised by unrecovered ACOAs or for those of us who were raised by people who couldn't see us who made us feel invisible for those of us who were raised by the truly truly sadistic the parents in our society who probably should never have had children. Not to say that we aren't, we shouldn't be here because I think that every child born under any and every circumstance is a valid worthy child regardless of the circumstances. And I don't care if they were horrendous circumstances. If, if you're here, you're meant to be here and you are enough and you have the potential to change the world and to change the planet to the extent that you're willing to change and love yourself. So every every person born is valid. So I'm speaking to those of us who have been abused overtly or covertly, those of us who have grown up feeling like we just weren't good enough and like no matter what we did, it wasn't good enough. And then those of us who, you know, because of the anxiety that we felt in our body, ended up being addicted because we had this underlying anxiety this level one stress <clears throat> and it was very uncomfortable and we didn't know how to deal with it and so we started drinking or smoking pot or we became love addicts and we enmeshed with other people and you know or we went shopping or became gamblers bulimics anorexic those of us who have come from homes that were not perfect but they weren't only not perfect they were dysfunctional and they caused us emotional harm we were stuck in some emotional uh, stage of development. And in that stuckness, in that sleep state, in, in our unconsciousness, we developed into adults who went out into the world with this childhood programming. And what did we do? Below the veil of consciousness, we just attracted what we knew. So if we were abused as children, we attracted people who abused us. And in lots of cases, I've had clients who've said, oh my God, the same friends that I had when I was six, that were pushing me around when I was six. <laughs> I have very similar friends, and now I'm 26 or I'm 36 or whatever. I have the same same family dynamics. I've had clients say, oh, my God, the home that I'm living in today is the exact floor plan of my childhood home that I grew up in. Like crazy stuff. Or, oh, my God, I realized that my ex-husband, my husband makes me feel the same way that my mother did. Like they are one and the same energetically. So we're born, we are born to dysfunctional systems and we get programmed and we go out into life as adults still unaware that we're unaware and we get married, we have kids, blah, blah, blah. And we've never secured this bond with our, with our mother or our father. And we've always felt this lack, you know, I, I liken it to, it's, it's almost like we're an infant and we were supposed to bond to our mothers that never happened. And so now that we have, we have this energetic leaking, you know, um, the umbilical cord was cut and another beautiful divine cord was supposed to take, take its place. It hasn't. And it's like, we are just leaking, leaking, trying to connect to someone. And I think it's normal to want to be, you know, de like, well, not dependent in a sick way, like in a needy way, but. I think it's very normal for us to want to come here and bond, you know, very, very normal. Um, unfortunately, when you're below the veil of consciousness and you've been abused in childhood, you're not bonding with healthy others and you stay in relationship dynamics long after you should. And so what do we do? And I know I'm four minutes in, um, but I wanted to really preface what, um, preface this, the, the, the whole purpose of this video um, with these understandings of who this video is meant for. It's meant for you. If you haven't been able to bond with your mother or your father and now they are dying or they have died, this video is for you. I get lots of requests for this type of video. So um, 
I like to speak from personal experience. And, you know, my heart's breaking right now because my mom is dying. My mom, in spite of all our problems, um, you know, in spite of the reason I wrote The Road Back to Me, um, in spite of everything that I shared in The Road Back to Me about her hitting me and breaking a brush over my back, um, which is true, otherwise I wouldn't have wrote it, um, growing up and feeling like she didn't like me, she didn't love me, she detested me, feeling like the only thing that made sense was to get out of her way. So now here I am, 52, my mom's in her mid-70s, and um, a few years back, my mom and I started to, finally, after all these years, finally started to see, see one another. And she said to me one day, it was during Hurricane Sandy, I was scared shitless in my house in Queens, and everything was going nuts in New York at that time. And my mom called me and uh, had a conversation about the book, and she said, I know you wrote the book, and I just want you to know that you know, I understand the message and everything that you wrote in the book that I've read so far is true. And I, I was speechless, you know. So my mom and I had some resolution. I understood that she understand me, understood me to some degree, but we we never we can't go deep, my mom and I. We just can't go deep. And now there's no chance of going deep because she's suffering from severe dementia. Um, she is in a rehab facility right now, but as of yesterday, they aren't sure if she had another stroke. She's had she had a stroke a few weeks ago. Well, last month, a month and a half ago, she had a had a serious stroke. Then she ended up um, having seizures, and then she actually ha went into cardiac arrest like five times. Like this is one tough woman. Anyway, she hasn't come out of the rehab, and now she's dying. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about what how, how we can process and what I'm going through in my own head. Um, as I as I'm approaching the end of my mother's life and understanding what I'm going to have to go through emotionally as a human being and as the daughter of this mom I never got to connect to. So what's happening is, in my opinion, is on some emotional level, that attachment bond that I always wanted, it's leaving. And it's I'm consciously aware that it's leaving. The opportunity to bond with this person who created me is leaving and you know as long as people are alive I think the little kid in us the inner child in us is like maybe tomorrow you know maybe tomorrow maybe tomorrow maybe at the next family gathering my mother will see me maybe the next phone call you know we could be like 60 and our mothers could be like 85 and we could be waiting like that little child like maybe tomorrow you know when I bring my mom some food from the grocery store she'll say I see you Thank you. I love you. And we wait and we wait. But when that, when that possibility escapes, especially through death, then what? What do we do with that? And so I think what we have to do as sons and daughters, daughters and sons, because this happens for sons too, obviously, you know, um, I think what we have to do is we have to appreciate what's happening in our soul and what's happening um, in, our, in our minds, what's happening in our being. Consciously, consciously, we have to respect that there is going to be an inner child experience, in my humble opinion. These are just my opinions. I'm not a psychiatrist or a, psych a psychologist. This is just my opinion. I believe that the inner child in us is going to have this experience of my mommy's leaving and I'm never going to get her to love me now, which is difficult. So we have to accept that there's good, we're going to feel like this weepy little girl, this weepy little boy, and that's normal. That's normal. And then what I think what we have to do is we have to honor that. So um, I'm not trying to suppress that feeling that I'm feeling. I'm not, I'm not trying to rationalize it away. I'm not trying to dissociate from it. Um, it's honest. It's raw. And it's real. And I know that the only way to return to ground zero if you guys understand the trauma cycle, right? Um, so many of you do. We, most of us who have been traumatized in childhood, we, we, we have this. We, we're stuck in like this trough of. Um, it's a great video. I wish I wrote it down. Um, maybe I'll include it in the link. But we, those of us who grew up in difficult homes, we live in this this constant state of of um, stable anxiety, right? And so. For us to get to ground zero, we've got to learn to deal with that anxiety and process that anxiety. So right now I'm feeling very, very anxious. Mom's dying, very, very sad. Um, 
All the years that I needed her to understand me, I didn't understand her either. And now at 52 years old, I look back on my life and I look at my mom and I understand she's exactly why I do what I do. She's an unrecovered, abused ACOA. Both parents were alcoholics. Both brothers were alcoholics. Very, very below the veil of consciousness. Very codependent, very people-pleasing, you know, um, very reactionary towards her children. I would say, you know, even narcissistic towards her children. Not saying she was a narcissist. What I'm saying is she had narcissistic tendencies towards her children. But when it came to my dad, she was a complete people pleaser, doormat, um, codependent towards my dad. So for me to like now look back and say, wow, my mom is, I understand her now. You know, and I have so much empathy and so much compassion for her now. You know, I went through the phase of pinning the tail on the donkey, understanding how her childhood affected me, honoring my own inner child, finding my sense of self, saying, Yes, this happened to me. Getting angry about it, which because it's normal, it's normal, and it's healthy to get angry. Help me find myself and feel myself. No, you don't want to get stuck there. You want to move that energy because you don't want to get stuck, you know, in this this gully in this valley of of anger and and um, stable anxiety. You want to go to ground zero where you're nice and content and things are peaceful, right? So. If you're in a situation similar to mine where mom is dying, dad's dying, or um, your parents have passed on and they've been abusive, and that, and you're feeling the feelings of, of abandonment, that's very, very normal. So honor that, okay? Give yourself time to grieve that. So what I'm doing is I'm being very, very kind to myself, right? So I'll take baths instead of showers. I'll say no to some people instead of yes. You know, I'll get quiet. I will. I tend to become introverted when I'm when I'm going through a growth process, and letting go is all part of growing, right? Um, and so, be good to yourself. Honor how you feel, and know that it's not about dissociating. It's not about gambling. It's not about finding a way to distract yourself from this uncomfortable anxiety. It's about learning how to process it, staying in your body, and knowing that it's not enough to live with you know, in a constant state of stable anxiety. We want to go to ground zero. We want peace. We want contentment. So you want to allow it. The other thing that I think from, from the inner child's perspective, right? So we use metacognition. We use the prefrontal cortex. We use higher thought to appreciate the inner child's experience because there's an abandonment. There's an attach, There's an attachment trauma. There is a fantasy that is being lost in this situation. When mom is dying, never going to have that. And when dementia is part of it, like that's even more complicated in my opinion. Um, but at the end of the day, there's this, there's this milestone that every human being incarnates on this planet to secure that is being lost through death and it's slipping through our hands and there's nothing that we can do about it. So accept how you feel, feel what you feel and decide to be good to yourself through the process. Um, and honor the inner child's experience. And the other thing that I suggest that you do, and it helps me, so it's sort of like I'm honoring my emotional brain and then honoring my logical brain. I have to look at it from a rational um, standpoint and understand that there's nothing that I can do about this, that transitioning to, into spirit or letting go is very, very normal, and it happens for all of us. Death is a natural experience. I don't fear death. I don't fear death at all um, because I know it's, it's just another experience, you know, it's just another experience. Um, but I am, I am, you know, going to have to deal with my children, my family, whatever, and I will have a human experience. But if you can think about this from a, a rational standpoint where you understand that, you know, death is normal. This is mom's life experience. She's learning about herself, believe it or not. Her soul or her spirit is evolving, in my humble opinion. Don't mean to offend anyone who doesn't believe in that kind of stuff, but it is my belief. Um, so she's evolving. My father's evolving through the process, my sister, my brother. So my mom's personal path and her story is, is helping her grow, and it is helping the people around her grow. So I'm thankful for that, and that helps me to let go. That helps me not want to try to control it. At the end of the day, what I'm realizing on my personal path as a life coach and as an author um, and as somebody who really, really believes in, in um, helping spread love and light and helping people believe in themselves, what I'm going through, in my humble opinion, 
is a transcendent transcendence of ego where ego has us thinking that we're attached to these earthly roles like I'm a daughter well I have to transcend this idea that I'm a daughter even though I, I, I am but that is a that's an that's the ego's experience the ego wants to label everything ego wants to say mom is dying that's a bad thing it's not a bad thing that mom is dying mom's just passing on she's moving on and this is her process um, and so what I'm learning to do is I'm learning to understand that I as a person need to continue to transcend ego. And the more that I let go of these attachments, these ideas of who I think I am, because whoever I think I am, ego has defined. So um, if I think that I'm, that I'm, you know, I'll even just considering myself a life coach, you know, I'm, we're all more than what we do for a living. We're all more than our roles, the, 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 the letters that come after our name, we're all so much more than that, you know, and this experience, I'm using it, and it's as a way to help me transcend this idea that I should be attached to anything or anyone, and my goal is to just believe in myself, believe that I am enough, believe that my mother is enough, even though we, we never, we never really connected um, on a heart level, mother and daughter, I've been able to love my mother as a human being, as another facet of myself, as a facet of source. And so there is no judgment when it, when it comes to my mother anymore. I've passed through all those stages. And so some of you might still be passing through those stages. And if you are, that's okay. Honor yourself through those stages. It's totally fine to be angry and trying to process what's happening with mom and dad but just know that we don't want to get stuck there um hopefully 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 as you evolve and as i evolve we get to a point where we understand that everything that's showing up is a reflection of what's happened to us in the past and in my humble opinion as children we were powerless so if some if i'm experiencing something out here it's only because of something that's been impressed in here that was outside of my ability to push it away when I was a child and I was powerless. At the end of the day, as a grown-ass adult, grown-ass woman, I have to take responsibility at some point and say, okay, what's going on in here? How can I change what's going on out here? And um, I really do believe that our growth, all personal growth towards enlightenment is about transcending ego. In ego is all about attachments and ideas and beliefs. And if I believe that what my mother is going through, she should not be going through, I'm stuck. That's a lack of vibration and I will suffer. If I release it and I say, this is just my mother's experience. This is, this is her passing. This is what, this is what feels, this is what is she has to go through. I don't know how I'll transition. I don't know how you'll transition, but I know we'll transition. <laughs> So, but you don't want to get hung up thinking good, bad, left, right, up, down, black and white thinking. So for any of you that are going through this, um, love yourselves. There is, if you've had a difficult relationship with your parents and one of them is dying right now, um, that is going to speak to your inner child's wounds. Love yourself, dear ones. Love yourself. Know that it is possible to love yourself the way you were supposed to be loved. It is possible to fill up your own love tank as Mr. John Bradshaw, the brilliant genius that he was. God bless him. He has transitioned himself. And he has left the world a better, bigger, brighter place because of, of his work. So we can fill up our own love tank enough, so much, that we see the big picture. And we can look at letting go of, of the parents who we were unable to bond with as an opportunity to let go and as an opportunity to transcend ego. It's not easy, um, not easy watching somebody that you've been unable to bond with slip through your fingers. And um, it's a humbling experience and it hurts like hell on some levels, but the only thing that really will help, in my opinion, that will make this situation better is letting go letting go, seeing it from a higher state of awareness, um, and understanding that 
your relationship with your mom or your dad, as difficult as it might have been, may have served you, especially if you're watching this type of a video and especially if you're on the healing path. I know being raised by my mom and my dad has served me. Feeling so alone and being so abandoned and thinking that I was so crazy because everything looked perfect and watching myself marry somebody who mimicked this my child dynamics and then getting so sick, you know, and, and getting all these inflammatory disease processes kicking up and me worrying about dying and having everybody turn away with the exception of two friends at the time um, forced me to go within and it forced me to get the help that I needed at the time and it forced me to research and in, and in essence it helped create who I am today it helped create the language it that you're listening to it helped create the heart space that is trying to connect to your heart space it has helped create this YouTube channel it has helped create absolutely my books my coaching programs my meditations my podcasts all of it and so I see the big picture and I'm thankful for my life experiences. And I just want to honor all those adult children out there who have grown up feeling so lost and so forgotten. You're not forgotten by me. You're not forgotten by people like me. People like me see you. We understand you. Thank God for the internet. Thank God for YouTube. Thank God for Facebook and Twitter and social media. Thank God that we can connect and we can validate one another. So I see you, I hear you, I'm going through the, this process myself right now, um, and I wish to encourage you to do what you can to accept how you feel, feel what you feel, and decide to be good to yourself anyway, and to see if you continue, you can continue to fly higher and see it from a very rational viewpoint. And then my prayer for you is that you ultimately use any experience that you're in as an opportunity to teach you how to let go of ego and how to transcend the ego. Because whether your mother or father ever, ever bonded with you, the truth is you are enough and you always were enough. And no matter what anybody says and no matter what judgments might fall and no matter how even lacking you feel in your own skin, the truth is that you are enough. And in every moment, there's an opportunity to remember that. And to connect to that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for following my work. And just thank you for being you. Namaste. I bow to the love and the light that is absolutely in you, dear ones. Bye for now.